Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited to talk about Munchkin Spell School from Steve Jackson Games. This is for three or four players, take about an hour to play, and it's for ages 10 plus. And Munchkin Spell School, let's be brutally honest, is Munchkin Harry Potter. I'm just assuming they couldn't get the license, but this is a standalone slash expansion to the immensely popular Munchkin, but with a Harry Potter satire theme strapped onto it. I love Harry Potter. I like Munchkin, so this seems like a no-brainer. But is it? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Munchkin Spell School. So first and foremost, we're going to handy-dandy rule sheet. It is one big page, double-sided, full color. It's got some pictures, and it's very, very well done. This is their 30th or 40th version of Munchkin, so obviously they've got the rule booklet perfected, and this one is no different. Very well done rule booklet. So Munchkin Spell School is a standalone slash expansion to Munchkin, or any other version version of Munchkin and for all intents and purposes this is Munchkin Harry Potter all the humor in this game is going to be directed to at Harry Potter fans and you'll start to see that as we go through some of the cards but what you're going to be doing in Munchkin Skabel School is you're going to be trying to level up to level 10 you are going to do that by defeating monsters like Cleverest Snipes or the Potty Geist or uh, Tattlesnake or Cub Reporter Ringleader uh, all sorts of various different baddies that you will have to fight those baddies, in addition to helping you level up, and you do have to keep track of your level on a pen and paper, are also going to give you treasure cards, which is this deck right here, and all these cards are going to be good. Some of these will be things you'll be able to attach to yourself to make yourself more powerful. Some will help you uh, in battle and do various different things. Some will help you go up levels. Lots of different stuff in that deck, and all of it related to wizarding aka or harry potter now if you're familiar with munchkin you're probably wondering what are the new classes and races in this game because each new munchkin introduces new classes and new races so this one only has classes but it also has a really cool undead system that i want to talk about before we talk about the game so first and foremost uh you're going to have classes that you'll be able to do so you got the potion club the sports club forbidden magic club chess club and each one of these is going to give you various different special abilities and uh we'll just go over those real quick potion club when you play a one shot with a combat bonus it has an extra plus one so normally you'd get a plus two or a plus five now it's going to be a plus three or plus six which is great when you play a one shot roll the die on a six you get it back and may save it for later or use it again immediately if you use it immediately you cannot try to retrieve it a second time so really interesting ability there and can potentially be very very powerful if you can get that six sports club when you accept another player as your helper each of you draws a face down door card immediately so if you're willing to team up with other people because you're playing sports, and obviously we can see there are wings on that soccer ball, then you're going to get a card, which is great. Bonus clause, you only need 900 gold pieces to buy a level, because that is another way you'll be able to level up in this game. In addition to fighting monsters, you can sell some of the things you have. They'll have gold on the bottom right. Normally it costs you 1,000, but with this card in front of you, it'll only cost 900. The Forbidden Magic Club, and yes... We can all say that's Slytherin. Uh, when you kick open the door and find a curse, you may put it into your hand after suffering its effects because uh, you can then play that curse on someone else whenever you want. Also, not so fast, you may discard your whole hand, minimum three cards, to force another player to re-roll a successful runaway attempt. So that one's not nearly as useful, but still, in a pinch, can really help you out. Chess Club. You may look at the top door card in the deck before deciding whether to loot the room or look for trouble. So that one's pretty nice. You're always thinking a step ahead. And once per combat, you may lose one level to add a mate to any monster. The mate is identical to the base monster, including any enhancers played on it. It gives the same rewards if defeated. So this one is a really cool ability because it can either help you gain treasure or potentially gain levels, or this is the kind of card that can extend the game. Like if someone's about to defeat the game, you're like, all right, that has a mate. So now, you know, you're facing two of these monsters. So uh, very interesting clubs in the game. But let's go ahead and I'll show you how the game is played if you've never played a game of Munchkin before. So first and foremost, most. Once you start the game, you're going to have four treasure cards and four door cards, and you're going to play all the cards that have bonuses in front of you. So like this plus two shoe of backtracking. Because when you first start the game, you're going to start off as level one, and that means your character's power is level one, but you're going to be able to have some of these cards that will bump up your hat power. So I have the shoe of backtracking, so now my power is a level three, plus test all runaway penalties as bonuses instead. Pretty nice. We have a homemade varsity sweater. Thank you, uh, my Mama Weasley. So that one will put us up to five power. We have the sporting hat. <laughs> Once again, uh, obviously Harry Potter related. And this one's going to get us to up to eight on the first turn. So this was a fantastic draw we have here. Now, as I mentioned, 
you see the gold pieces on the bottom right here. This will tell you uh, how many gold pieces you have and you can potentially sell stuff combined for a thousand gold pieces. Paper bag, play during any combat, bang, plus two to either side, or plus five of you actually smash a bag at the table, usually only once. Uh, this one is going to curse, let people lose a level. Potion club, oh, that's great. So I can play this potion club. When you play a one shot with a combat bonus, there's an extra plus one. So that's what I am starting with. This is a pretty decent starting hand right now. I am very pleased with that starting hand. Now, the other thing that I want to mention, you know what? I'll mention that in a second. So let's go through the door. First thing you're going to do, unless you are a member of the chess club, is you are going to kick open the door, which means you are immediately just going to flip over the top card of the deck. Everyone will be able to see it. If it's a monster, you fight it. If it's not, you're going to be able to put it into your hand. Next, you have an option. You can either look for trouble or you can loot the room. Look for trouble means that you are going to play a card out of your hand, a monster out of your hand, and fight that specific monster. So I have the ex-librarian, Undead Level 10, which is something I probably don't want to play right now because I am only have a power of 8, and it's undead, which means someone else might lump something else in there, another undead card, which means I'm going to have to fight more than I'd like to. Also, I have the level 20 Moldy Mart, which is the most powerful character in the game. He who shall not be named uh, Moldy Mart. That gives me a kick, too. Um, so I don't have anything that I'm going to play right now because Moldy Mort's level 20. So I will just go ahead and loot the room, which means I'm just going to draw the top card of the deck. No one gets to see it. And then I do charity. If I have more than five cards in my hand, which unfortunately I do... I must play enough cards to either get me down or I'm going to have to give away cards to the person with the lowest level. So at this point, I would give away my cards, but you just do that. It's, you just give away your cards. And you're going to rinse, wash, repeat that. But let's show you how the combat works. Let's see if... There we go. So let's just say next time I kick open the door, and boom, there's a level 12 Motitor. Vroom, vroom, minus one to run away. And if you unsuccessfully run away, which is a mechanism that you'll have to deal with if you cannot defeat the monster, there will always be bad stuff on the bottom of each card. So for instance, this guy, I would lose two levels if I could not run away from him. But if I do defeat him, I gain a level and I gain three treasure. So let's see what I got in front of me. Right now, I am at a power of Eight. Plus, I'm in the Potion Club, so if I play a one-shot, it has an extra plus one, and as it so happens, I do have a one-shot right here, and if I got really crazy, I could even play my Paper Bag, and if I do actually smash a bag, I, this isn't a bag, so I guess, oh man, that's just a... That's, that's a bag, but it's not a paper bag. I don't have a paper bag at the table. So either way, what I would do is all right, say, all right, I'm facing this level 12 motor tour, and I would probably ask for help. Now, what you can do when you're facing a monster is you can ask for help from anyone at the table. And if they agree to help you out, they are now locked in battle with this bad guy as well, which means if they lose, they suffer, suffer the bad stuff as well. But if they win, then they're going to split the treasure with you. So in this case, three treasure. And this is where one of my favorite aspects of Munchkin, you're going to be wheeling and dealing say, all right, I'll give you two of the treasures. And they'll be like, no, 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 if you're, I'm going to help you out. I get all three of the treasures, but you still get the level. Uh, so there's a little bit of a negotiation phase here. And then everyone at the table is going to be able to go around and take turns playing modifiers on this. So let's just say uh, somebody wanted me to lose. So they might say, you know what? Uh, plus two to the monster. And then I might you know, be like, oh, plus two to us though. And what you have to do is you have to be able to defeat the monster by having a higher number than the monster. If you do that, then you get the reward at the bottom, which would be a level and three treasures. Some of the monsters will even let you go up uh, two levels. So for instance, like Moldy Mort, if you defeat it, you're going to go up two levels and you're going to get five treasures. So that is huge. But if you bad stuff, you were dead and all your stuff is moldy and ruined, no one may loot your corpse. So that one, obviously being dead, is bad in the game. But in this instance, we would defeat it. All these cards would get discarded into their corresponding spawning piles. I would go up one level, which you'd be keeping track of on pen and paper, or if you have a deluxe version of Munchkin on a board. And then the, however you decide to split the treasure, would split the treasure up, and you would go about on your merry way. Anywho, you're going to continue to go until someone gets to level 10 by defeating a monster. That's the only way you can get to level 10, unless a card specifically says otherwise. Once someone has gotten to level 10, they will be the winner of Munchkin Spell School. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. But you probably want to see some more of the cards, so let's just go ahead and I'll show you some more of the cards. So we got the Bubble Wand, Newt Boots, Starter Wand, the Two for Wand. The Two for Wand gets the higher bonus when you fight multiple monsters. So if you're fighting uh, two undead or a wandering monster, Rope of Reprisal, Friendly Big Kid, Overstuffed Backpack, the Witch Witch, Yeti Milk, 
ascetic advisor or academic advisor. Uh, so it's an ad with a visor or a visor on an ad. <laughs> you got the fire drill, bug beer, poly juice, pass your exams, loaded die, uh, loaded die. Apparently, I suck at shuffling. Extra pointy hat, play air hockey, alarm wand, motion potion, and then take some more look at some of the bad guys. Uh, so we got huff and puff, <laughs> bass a lick, uh, bully, curse. Computer Mouse, Misspelled, uh, Missed the Bus, and it's a flying bus, Humphrey Bogart, Forbidden, yeah, we got the Forbidden Magic Club, Cheat, Dead Drunk, so lots of various different Harry Potter related stuff, but that in a nutshell is what you're going to get in the game. Alright then, Munchkin Spell School from Steve Jackson Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. It's Munchkin. If you do not like Munchkin, this is not going to change your mind. They haven't changed pretty much anything at all. So if you don't like the King of the Hill problem or the fact that the game can stretch on a little bit too long, this one's not going to be for you. And also, one thing that I do want to mention is, while I really enjoy this particular class, which is the Chess Club, it can also stretch out the game because it has a mate special ability, which means you're going to be able to essentially copy a monster. And what happens is when someone gets to level 9, inevitably you are going to copy that monster, which means the game is going to stretch a little bit longer. It's just another card that's in pretty heavy rotation in this game uh, that is going to stretch out the game, which some people will have a con with. Another con that I have in this game is that I like the Munchkins where they have classes, new classes, and new races. This one just has new classes, and I understand why. It's the smaller box version version of the game which another con of the smaller box version of the game is it only plays three or four players so you're going to need another small box uh, version of munchkin or another large box version of munchkin if you want to play at the higher player counts but once again once you get to those higher player counts it's going to stretch out the length of the game which will be something other people do not like last con i have of the game it's pretty self-explanatory if you do not like harry potter then you're going to want to get a different version of Munchkin. It's just that simple because they are very blatantly obvious that this is Harry Potter satire. So go get Steampunk or Zombie or Superhero Munchkin or Marvel Munchkin or X-Men Munchkin or any other different version of Munchkin if you do not like Harry Potter. But that's pretty obvious. Moving on to the pros though, I enjoy Munchkin and I really enjoy this expansion because I love Harry Harry Potter and this is just dripping dripping leaking out of the box with Harry Potter satire so I think if you like Munchkin and if you like Harry Potter at all this is a no-brainer expansion to add to your collection of Munchkin because as I said I mean it's just dripping with the Harry Potter and you're gonna have a lot of fun looking at each and every card and being like oh that's related to this oh this is supposed to be this character and I like that an awful lot. Yeah, eventually you will go through all the cards and they'll lose some of their value. And that's just typical munchkin because once you see a, car, a joke twice, it's not nearly as funny. But still, I really like what they did with this game. Uh, I like the fact they didn't try and curb their bet and make it like half, you know, half Harry Potter and half like, I don't know, some other magic thing. This is just all Harry Potter. Uh, I also really like the classes. While there are only classes in this and no races, I did like the classes. I think they have some really cool, unique special abilities in this one. I think some of these are really powerful as well. So I like what they did with the classes. I really like the undead special ability. Now, that being said, that will be a con to some people, in particular people like me, who have a big box of Munchkin. I have all my stuff crammed into my original Munchkin Deluxe box. So when I play a game of Mega Munchkin, you know, sometimes I will have to go back and read a ruler tool for like dragons and now for the undead because you'll be like wait what's undead do i don't quite remember that being said it's a very easy rule it's just that you can add essentially a free wandering monster as long as that wandering monster is undead so i love that i think that's a really cool concept and a really cool idea especially when you consider you know you could just drop the moldy mort voldemort on somebody's head because he's undead as well uh, then you can even mate him so uh, I, I just really like a lot of what they did with this game this is immediately going into my collection and this is probably one of my new favorite munchkin expansions but take that with a grain of salt because i love harry potter and if you like harry potter i think you're gonna like this as well assuming you like munchkin so that is munchkin spell school from steve jackson games one that i definitely enjoyed and i definitely can recommend if you like munchkin and if you like harry potter if you enjoyed this review please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know harry potter which one is your favorite book for me personally number four always number four i'm a huge die hard sports fan so when i found out that goblet of fire was going to take place primarily around a giant sporting event aka pretty much the world cup i was super freaking stoked wizarding magic and fun mixed with sports yes give it to me give it to me so yeah 
Goblet of Fire is my favorite book. What's your favorite book? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.